All right. I don't think it's a bold claim to say that every good uh, software development process had a continuous integration, continuous um, deployment in some form. So uh, Nidhanath is going to tell us about a bit more about that and how to maybe make it better. And with that, please give a warm hand. Yeah. Thank you very much. So uh, before this talk, a talk uh, by Warp Forge, uh, Fork, um, which was very exciting despite technical difficulties. Uh, this, um, yeah, I don't have a working software actually, um, but only ideas. If anyone wants to collaborate, uh, you can come to me. Um, if not, maybe it stays on my backlog of project that I am probably starting when I go into re retirement or something. So, um, yeah, uh, if you read the description of this talk, uh, my main premise is that uh, projects do want an evergreen master, which means that uh, every basically commit or every revision uh, was uh, tested and was okay. Um, I mean, why do we do even need a evergreen master? I mean, uh, if uh, some commit failed and the next one is okay, uh, yeah, why should we uh, even care? Um, I mean, you can go like it's it's shiny. It's it's nice to have these green, yeah, check marks all, all over the place. But also, um, if you allow um, for basically bad revisions uh, to reside in your repository, you may start uh, accumulati uh, accumulating a lot of errors. And there are a lot of projects where, uh, well, they do have a test suite and uh, a lot of th those tests are known to fail and will not get fixed uh, anytime soon. Also, um, if you yeah, find some uh, error or some regression which wasn't previously covered by your test suite or something, you usually uh, do a BSEC. And yeah, it's kind of annoying if uh, half of your commits uh, yeah, do need some special treatment because those are broken. Uh, yeah. If you um, basically have an evergreen master, your chances that you can just uh, automate your BSEC and be done with it uh, is yeah, far greater. Uh, so, can we actually do have uh, an evergreen main branch in our Git repositories? Uh, yeah, with all the CI solutions I've seen up to until now, uh, not really. So uh, I'll use a bit of uh, I'll use common Git terminology uh, throughout this talk. Uh, when I talk about a job, it's uh, a concrete test that I run on. Uh, yeah that um, basically describes steps to check your software and will uh, return is basically a success or failure. And a job run uh, is an ex execution of this job on a specific revision. Uh, for now, I will um, basically, a job will denote uh, like a whole CI pipeline, meaning that uh, if a job passed, then everything passed, but later on, uh, yeah, go into more detail about that. So, classical example, uh, we uh, have uh, a few comments, basically, and the last one is uh, okay, and we have one developer um, who yeah, finds a bit of yeah, unused craft and wants to clean it up, and another com, uh, developer who wants to implement a new feature, and it's like, whoa, there's already code for that that I just can use. And if you merge them after another, the first one goes uh, through, the other one gives you a bad revision. So now the maintainer uh, can easily uh, yeah, decide to revert this commit and have this one bad commit basically stuck on his main branch. Or yeah, uh, can basically reset the uh, main branch with yeah, isn't a very good idea. I mean, if you uh, go to like, a, yeah, a lot of people will le uh, yell at you if you just reset your main branch uh, in your public project. 
uh, also um, if you do this and another developer uh, already uh, um, based a feature branch uh, on this bad revision then uh, a merge will just reintroduce this bad commit again. So uh, we can go and basically test before updating the target branch which means that we uh, do the merge and check the merge commit actually. We can do this um, without uh, updating the main branch at least in Git and also in a lot of other uh, distributed uh, yeah, uh, control versioning systems which are hopefully the only ones still around. Um, and then choose to update the main branch uh, on the merge commit which we deem uh, yeah, the one we want to choose. Of course uh, once we move the main branch we have to uh, yeah, uh, do another merge to get uh, the new result for the other branch and then yeah, uh, if there are problems we will detect them early and just choose to not update the main branch meaning that this bad revision won't go into the main branch, won't become a part of our public history in our commit, uh, in our uh, repository, and will not basically haunt us of, uh, for the rest of our lives um, if in yeah, five years someone uh, finds a nasty bug which was introduced uh, previous to this point. Um, if we find a bad revision and still want to merge this other main branch, we can uh, basically do some uh, change on main again. In this example it would be a revert. Uh, it could be another thing we do to uh, make the other branch work again. And then basically uh, do uh, another merge, check it, find it's okay and then update the main branch. Um, yeah, needless to say this is not what CIs do. Um, we can also, to make our lives, lives easier, introduce references for individual jobs we run because, um, I mean, if those are not yet part of main, those merge commits, we still may want to look at them before actually choosing them. Uh, so it's basically a piece of convenience. Uh, assuming we have this cleanup into feature branch existing, uh, we could uh, uh, denote those mergers job 1 and job 2 and uh, job 3 the failed merge or something uh, which we can then basically identify by this reference name and investigate what did uh, go wrong basically by just yeah, uh, fetching the ref from the repository and checking it out and then yeah, run some local tests. Um, now we can uh, go in a step further and say as a uh, maintainer of a repository we want to say which um, commit we want to choose as our next basically main. So uh, we can go and uh, add a new test reference which will um, basically serve as a pointer for the new merge commit we want to choose. Um, so suppose this last dot is a merge commit from some feature branch or something. Uh, so we wait until uh, the check is complete, main gets updated, we can automate it and then we can go further to the next merge, uh, let it get checked and the main branch updated and yeah, if we go like this, um, we find ourselves uh, anxiously staring at screens uh, of our basically CI service, which um, isn't too uncommon for existing setups actually. I found myself looking anxiously at, yeah, merges go through and I guess I'm not the only one. Um, but this test ref also has another nice uh, feature we can just say, okay, I have these uh, feature branches and I will merge them in order, update the test ref and uh, tell our CI system to check 
those in order and basically assure us this, that uh, all of them are green without actually waiting for each individual comment to go through. Uh, and this is actually a testing window which uh, gives the name of this talk. Uh, so in this example, our CI service uh, can uh, yeah, basically follow the test ref until uh, all the merges we prescribed as a maintainer uh, are checked and uh, found okay. So um, let's look at what are our chases when a test actually fails. Again, we have this testing window, now with uh, a bit more commits. And uh, each uh, of the first three is found okay, but now we have uh, a bad commit. And we can choose yet another reference, the bad reference, to uh, point at that one and basically tell our maintainer, okay, this uh, revision is bad, uh, go look at it. And then the maintainer can come up with another, basically, path uh, to achieve the goal by either skipping this merge of this feature, which may not be that important, or requesting an update of this feature branch uh, from another contributor. And after we've updated test ref, the CI service can uh, yeah, basically carry on and check the rest of this. Yeah, a uh, bit of history, basically. Um, if we have other contributors, basically, uh, everything which is in main uh, is a yeah, possible merge base for uh, feature branches. This is nothing new. This is just how we work currently. But of course, um, Using the test ref or anything between main and test uh, as a yeah, uh, base for a feature branch is a bad idea because we don't know whether our base will actually make it into main. So yeah, actually nothing really changes for contributors. Uh, for them, the test ref is something they can usually ignore. Uh, it's mainly something for the maintainer. So um, given these examples, we can derive some rules. Um, we can move tests, uh, test, so the test reference arbitrarily, um, as long as it's, it's a descendant of main. Uh, we can force post this uh, reference, which is pretty important for this uh, reaction on a bad revision. Uh, main follows test and only moves forward. So we preserve this behavior that once a comet is in main, it stays there and can serve as, for example, a base for a feature branch or for a release branch or something like that. Uh, bad, the bad reference may be placed uh, between main and the test reference. And uh, yeah, it's never updated um, main is never updated uh, to any of bad descendants. So basically, bad is a roadblock for the progression of main. And also uh, a handy thing for the maintainer to have to figure out what actually could go wrong. Uh, contributors, again, uh, yeah, they just see main and use this. Uh, we can enforce these rules by basically GitHub, uh, Git hooks. Um, or we can basically hack Git or GitLab or something to enforce this for us. Um, one thing we have to keep in mind, which I'm still unsure about, is how to actually uh, handle this, this uh, test ref and, and the main ref. Because for a maintainer, uh, you can go and uh, be like, OK, a maintainer should know what she, he is doing. Um, they just touch the test ref and uh, pushes to main are basically uh, ignored or forbidden by a hook. Or you can choose uh, to go this path where you uh, say, OK, if you try to push to main, what's actually happening is that main stays the same and the test ref is what gets pushed. 
So earlier I said uh, that a job for me uh, for now was um, a complete uh, CI run. But there are many reasons why we want uh, multiple kind of jobs. So um, again, we have a testing window now with three commits. And um, we have uh, some check we want to run. Uh, maybe a simple compile test, maybe a check on yeah, uh, formatting or something. Cheap stuff, basically. Um, we can have another test, which um, basically uh, does some ex uh, expensive operations, which can take maybe an hour or something. Um, you'll find many projects which have test suits, which are very large. Yeah. Uh, we can have this uh, quick reference, uh, basically denoted uh, through um, yeah, its own reference, um, which is called good slash quick. And we can have uh, basically this reference progress uh, linearly, commit by commit. Um, and yeah, in this situation, uh, let's say uh, the previous test has completed uh, after two hours or something, and um, we got uh, an OK by or nightly builds or something. Then we can say we have another reference placed uh, good nightly. So we have basically uh, different good references, which different tests denote as yeah, this this is okay. This commit passed this specific test. So we uh, uh, update main to basically the uh, oldest good reference um, because yeah, uh, that's basically passed all tests we have basically. So the quick test can now just progress. And uh, yeah, as uh, the nightly might have uh, uh, suggested, we can have it run fewer times, so not for every commit. Uh, and then update the main again. So why would I do this? Because earlier I said that we want an evergreen master and do not want to skip uh, tests for some commits or have bad revisions in our history. So uh, cheap tests are cheap. We can just run them on a very commit uh, in our main branch. But there are expensive tests. And most of them have actually a little, very little chance to hit actual problems. For example, if we have uh, performance regressions, they don't pop up and vanish with another commit. Uh, yeah, or some other problems found through formal verification don't won't usually pop up and vanish from one commit to the other. And yeah, we can go crazy. We can have very expensive tests run seldomly and still have this uh, uh, relatively high assurance that uh, the range of commits between the last run and the current run is still okay. So it's a bit of a gamble, but you can do basically a bit of math on it, uh, on the probabilities, and say, OK, it's uh, not so bad. And again, uh, we earlier wanted to mainly eliminate uh, bisection hazards. And usually, cheap tests like compile this, if it's not just something like LibreOffice, which takes, yeah, or we do format checks or license checks or something. Um, yeah, those usually are sufficient for eliminating those hazards. Uh, we don't usually uh, care yeah, that often for perform uh, performance uh, issues when we find a five-year-old bug in our software. So going a bit further, we even may go and prolong this testing window for 
an extended period of time. The nightly for, uh, before implied that we run those tests daily. But if we have a really expensive test, like, yeah, formally verify heap office, which is not going to happen, uh, yeah, we can do this just once a week uh, because the probability that in this uh, time frame of a week we introduced uh, dead torrents as a bug should be hopefully very low if it compiled, at least uh, with modern programming languages. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, or you can go, okay, um, I have this test, which isn't even that expensive uh, in terms of like line systems or power or computational time, uh, but uh, there are some manual steps involved. We can do this once a week or every second day or something and still be okay because we can just denote, uh, use this good reference for this specific manual test to denote, okay, I checked this comment, this comment was okay, uh, go further. Uh, if you happen to do DevOps, for example, you can use uh, different good refs uh, to make staging or canary part of your actual testing and not in the sense of um, you fix something after it hit main, which may end up introducing very ugly hotfix, but find the actual commit which introduced the issue, uh, we'll see that later, and then say, okay, um, I'll skip this for now, maybe uh, move this feature to the back backlog or something, or just skip it and then go on with uh, yeah, the other work, which is not blocking. So, yeah, as I said, uh, we can have um, manual tests part of your CI, basically, uh, which we can use as a means for a maintainer uh, to approve of changes, um, for example, chosen by sub-maintainers. If you are a bit familiar with the development of the Linux kernel, there's Linux Next, which basically is a testing ground for mergers from many, many sub-maintainers. And very often you find things like, okay, this didn't merge cleanly, I have this solution for the merge, and you should pick this specific um, solution when you do the actual merge. If you use a testing window, then this particular solution is already a commit which is basically scheduled to be in main already. Similarly, if you have uh, subsystems which are not ready yet, um, because they are something experimental or something which uh, are just uh, playing around, you can still have them covered by those cheap um, compile checks or something. But if the maintainer um, finds them, uh, again, uh, he or she can just say, okay, um, move this back, just uh, push it uh, up and yeah, we'll look at this later. So uh, the first idea you might have um, is, well, why don't the maintainer just uh, yeah, update main itself, but yeah, this would basically, it is an option, but uh, I don't find it too nice. Um, so I'll uh, assume that uh, you use a good ref to actually uh, yeah, have maintainer approval. So in this example we uh, uh, saw that we had an old good ref which is updated and uh, after these, these quick checks progressed, the maintainer basically can uh, have a look at all those checks which um, are already found good uh, without basically uh, worrying about um, investing time in checking merge commits which are known to fail, for example. This is another um, yeah, uh, possibility for um, an implementation. 
uh, to have one good ref to depend on another good ref, so to just uh, always stay behind it, to not waste uh, computation time or yeah, maintainer time on uh, useless stuff. So, assuming uh, the maintainer found a bad comet, uh, he can just uh, complain to the sub-maintainers or something. And then uh, we can come up with another um, history, uh, which maybe uh, finds approval of this maintainer. Um, yeah. And not waste, basically, time with uh, manually tracking merge resolutions across uh, different pieces of uh, potential history. Um, another thing we can do is uh, basically bring our community uh, into testing because um, good refs uh, are actually quite cheap and it doesn't actually hurt too much to have lots of them. So each individual compile or yeah, former check uh, can have its own reference uh, if it's not too messy to have all of them around. Um, and yeah, so if we have, for example, for a library, different uh, yeah, users, uh, we can just let them contribute by checking this new version of our library, for example, for um, not the main branch, but some release branch um, with their software. And if it's okay for them, they can give feedback by a good reference, which they place on the commit they actually tested, or say, um, yeah, we have a, we found a serious problem. We are not okay with this. Uh, please fix it. Obviously, we would uh, allow this only for yeah, users we trust. Um, and so they can basic, basically contribute and uh, yeah, help in testing our software. Um, yeah, As a, we can also uh, introduce a timeout for good references for, um, let's say, uh, sources of varying degrees of trust. Um, by simply checking how old the comet is, uh, this ref points to. Because if we have a good reference by uh, some, let's say, library user pointing to a comet which is three weeks old, then yeah, we can assume that this particular user probably um, stopped testing software or just keeps us back then we can uh, have this reference removed and then progress main all the way. So there's another thing uh, involving test failure, which we can actually do uh, to improve the situation. Uh, so let's assume we have a, uh, an expensive test, um, which only looks at each 10th comet or at the newest comet every week or something, and we actually found a problem. Uh, we can actually be sick because we removed all those section hazards, and we can probably do this uh, automatically, and then uh, choose a new good or bad ref, which then uh, serves as the basis for an alternate history. And um, yeah, there are some considerations we have to do, for example, because, um, yeah, um, assume we have a test bench with like 100 different tests, and one of them uh, uh, is basically telling us there's no problem. We can just pick this one uh, and use it for bisection, but um, in the case we are moving a good reference, we usually want to do the full test of uh, all those tests in the suit for this check that was, yeah, um, was performed by or, yeah, Rick. 
So this introduces another um, few considerations to our rule. So uh, the rule for test basically um, stays the same. Uh, for main, I already explained, we uh, um, update it automatically to the oldest good ref, or more precisely, the um, common ancestor of all known good refs, which we uh, basically uh, define through our own tests, or we let uh, be defined through library users, kernel users, hardware vendors or whatever. Uh, good refs also fo uh, only follow tests um, and basically uh, serve as an intermediate and uh, differentiation point between yeah, uh, different tests. And they also only move forward in the good case. In the bad case they are uh, allowed to move to a different branch, but it's another story. Um, we previously uh, introduced a bad reference, and this uh, we only upload, um, allow to be placed between uh, main and test. Um, as we said before, uh, bad serves as a roadblock for main, so it stops the progression of main. Uh, and a very important piece of information, bad is never updated to any of its own uh, descendants only to ancestors, which is important because uh, if we have multiple yeah, job executions uh, for uh, yeah, our range um, and different tests find problems, then we don't want uh, our bad reference to move forward uh, but tell us what's the earliest problem, what's the earliest roadblock in our history. Yeah, there are a few other things which I uh, actually forgot to put in, in this presentation. But uh, yeah, if someone's interested, we yeah, can elaborate even further. I um, also came with a few conventions, uh, at least for Git, uh, because that's what I tend to use most often. I'm not uh, actually familiar with other distributed version uh, control systems. So yeah, it's basically would be a basis for an implementation. Uh, and having this convention uh, actually allows us to yeah, have interoperable inter uh, implementations because if we have, uh, for example, different uh, kinds of test infrastructure, uh, which only uh, um, modify the good ref and, and the bad ref, um, according to the rules we previously defined, uh, then we can have basically different implementations for different kind of jobs if uh, we find those yeah, uh, different implementations uh, serve different purposes. Or if for example, library users uh, prefer different uh, representation um, implementation. Yeah. So that was my talk. Uh, I hope I didn't bore you too much. Yeah. Awesome. So have we had? Awesome, so we have a bit of time left for Q&A. Um, if you have any question, please uh, just put up your hand and I'll come get the mic to you. I think you said you don't have an implementation yet, right? Yeah. Uh, so uh, the basic idea is at least it uh, reminded me quite a bit of uh, Zool with the speculative uh, merging basically of uh, in parallel uh, building the jobs that are uh, the, the commits that are scheduled for, for merging and also mm -hmm. this uh, check and gate pipeline with the um, different levels of how much you you would test or execute and tests. Mm -hmm. So have you have you compared it to that? Uh, no, uh, I'm, I think I stumbled up on Zool once, but uh, I think I didn't have too deep a look actually. Uh, yeah, 
but still uh, it would be nice to have uh, different implementations which are interoperable for different purposes. So I'll have a look, yeah, of, of course. Uh, is it on? Uh, I have two questions. First, um, what is the TW stands for in your uh, uh, testing window? It's plain. Ah, okay. Yeah. And then the other thing is uh, this Zool. Uh, I have never heard of it. Uh, how do you write it? Pardon? V U U L. Yeah. So basically, I guess like the bad guy in Ghostbusters. <laughs> yeah. Or is it with? Uh, O's or U's? U. U's, oh, yeah, then it's... Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I actually have a question myself. So yeah. uh, I was wondering if you've heard of BORS yet. BORS is, especially in the Rust ecosystem, sometimes a merge bot for, yeah. I assume, similar problems. Yeah, uh, I've seen it once, but uh, again, I think I was distracted at this point. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so thank you for your talk. Mm -hmm. And I guess if any more questions pop up, feel free to reach out to him.